Well, what does everybody think about the music event that Apple just put on yesterday? All in all, I think they've done a really good job. I think a few things could have been touched on that wasn't touched on, but I think for the most part, I think they've done an excellent job and they give us music lovers a lot of good things to uh, look forward to and to uh, keep us busy through the um, winter months until the next big thing, which everybody's speculating at the beginning of the year will be a tablet. But I'm convinced after this keynote that there will be no tablet per se, like the traditional tablet like you're thinking, because they specifically showed a netbook going in that guy's back pocket, the Dell, and it wouldn't fit, and he said, ours fits. We have pocket computing, you know, there was iterating how the experience on the iPhone was just like almost a netbook where you could carry it around with you. So I'm thinking they're not really interested in that market. But me and a few friends on YouTube have concluded that they might be interested and you all won't understand the significance of this, especially a lot of you younger guys. But we think that maybe an e-reader is going to be coming out with additional functionality like a tablet. But we're going to have like kind of like the Amazon Kindle has ebooks. I think an ebook section may be added to iTunes. Now, don't quote me on this. This is just pure speculation, you know. And I'm usually wrong about these kind of things. But I just after that keynote, I don't see a tablet in the future as much as say a tablet like device. I don't think it's going to actually actually be a tablet, but it may be a tablet like device if we're lucky. It's about time they refresh some things and. I think at the beginning of 2010 we'll see that. Um, the big question was, why wasn't there a camera in the iPod Touch? And there's probably a lot of reasons for this. They may still plan on having it, but really for the main reason is that would really more than ever put Apple and AT&T in direct competition with one another. Because if the iPod Touch had a camera and a video, then all you'd have to do is use VOIP and you could use the iPod Touch and have all the functionality just about, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you could, they would be in direct com but we're competition with each other, but where the iPhone has that camera, you can send pictures and videos, and you can't do that with the iPod. And I really think that has something to do with it. Um, what advantages would the iPhone have over the iPod Touch if the iPod Touch had the video camera, besides the phone service? I mean, that's really about all the functionality it would have. But right now, as it stands, there's a pretty good reason to go with the iPod Touch. I mean, the iPhone. Even if you're not going to use it as a phone, if you want that camera, you know. I think it was a good idea to put a camera in the Nano first as a testing ground to see how it goes. I, myself, for 150 bucks, I plan on getting one. I carry that Kodak ZI6 around now, and it's huge. And if I can carry around one of these... With a little camera in it, I won't even put music on it. I'll just use it for my camera, and the only thing I'll store on it's video. I'll put it right in the same box as I keep my iPod Touch and iPhone. And if I need to record video or something, I'll just take it out. This will be my portable camera. It will not be used as a traditional iPod. I might keep audio books on it if I want to or something like that. But I'll usually just use the little iPod with the camera in it for um, just that, a camera. You know, I'd say Apple is wanting you to buy both. They want you to own both. The iPod Touch users, now, they're trying to get the iPod Touch users to buy an iPod Nano. Just for the sole reason of you having a camera. Because why not? You get in the camera with just like the Flip, uh, flip you know, or something. It's not an HD, but just like the Flip, you're getting the camera just as good as the Flip. But you're getting added functionality of the iTunes Store and music if you want it. But if I'm going to spend $150 on a portable camera, if I was in the market for a flip, I would buy one of these. Why not? Why Why wouldn't I get one of these? At least it's an iPod 2, right? And you have access to you, you know, iTunes U and a podcast and all that good stuff. So really, I think that's what they're aiming at. They're not wanting iPod Touch users to have a camera in their phone. They're wanting iPod Touch users to buy an iPod Nano for their camera. Okay, that's... Besides from it putting the, the iPod Touch in greater competition with AT&T and the iPhone, I think mainly they're wanting iPod Touch users to go out and buy one of these. And that's what I'm doing. Just to see, you know, I'm, I, I want to get it, see how it works, see how it looks, and we can do a review on it. But I think it's a really, really great idea. 
and just people need to open their minds and think about why Apple really done this. They want to sell this as a camera to the iPod Touch users. They don't want to sell it as an iPod. They want to sell it as a camera, and it makes sense. It's kind of a test bed, I think, kind of like the MacBook Air was. Another big deal. Huh. iTunes LPs. Wonderful. Wonderful. I think this is just, once again, they have reinvented digital music. Um, the record companies were looking for a way to start selling whole albums again. And Apple has found that for them. Of course, there's going to be people yelling, Oh, Monopoly, Monopoly, I want digital content on my album, but I have to use iTunes if I want to get the digital content. Blah, 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 blah. I'm waiting for all that to come up. But it, don't, you know, don't dispute the fact that Apple was innovating once again. Because once you buy one song, you're pretty much wasting your money if you buy the whole album after that. You're spending more than you, you would have originally if you just bought the album. So the LPs is... This is a revolutionary thing. Not evolutionary. People's going to say it's evolutionary, but this is a revolutionary thing for digital music. Okay, this put this this reinvigorates the whole album. This reinvigorates buying a collection. This reinvigorates the soul of music. You know, the way it used to be when you go to the store and you buy an LP or a DVD or a CD and you'd get all the extra features and that brings this back with the advantage of it being digital. This is really, really going to revolutionize iTunes. Just give it a year or so, it really is. Um, along with the extra features, I've been wanting that forever. I've always thought to myself, why do I got to pay the same damn money for digital content when I can go out and buy the physical DVD and get all this extra content? And for a while, I think they left it that way for incentive for people to buy the physical DVD. But I think now they're starting to realize that that's not going to happen. So they're doing whatever they can do to kind of just salvage the situation. They're finally starting to work with us a little bit. They see the power that iTunes wields over the um, I, the music community. And um, I think they're finally starting to embrace it a little bit. Finally. iTunes 9 facelift looks good. It's subtle change, but it's enough to where it looks cleaner and more streamlined. Um, the iPhone games, great. Great. I'm so loving this that the iPhone is finally breaking into new territory. Apple's finally branching out into new territory that they've never really dealt with before. I myself play games on the iPod Touch. I enjoy them. I play them mainly in the car, in the doctor's office. You know, I don't sit down and play them for hours at a time like I do my Nintendo DS. Okay? I still like my DS. Okay? I still like the experience my DS gives me. And that's not to say that Apple's not approaching that experience because it is every day. And eventually, I expect it to eclipse DS sales and stuff. Eventually, you know. I mean, right now, anybody can get a DS, you know, pretty cheap. And that's really powerful. You can go to Walmart or Toys R Us and get a DS. So, iPhone ain't going to be really touching the DS anytime soon. But they've made Nintendo take notice. And I'm wondering how long it's going to be before Nintendo puts their own Mario app on the iPhone or their own Nintendo games for the iPhone. I'm wondering how long that's going to be. I really think this has been a really wonderful keynote address. I think they've come out with a lot of great things. Not a lot of big wow factors for people to go, wow. But this whole year, it seems like, has been about subtle changes to make the experience more solid and better. This whole round of updates... Snow Leopard, you know, didn't tweak the UI or change anything or add any new features. They concentrated on finessing it, polishing it up, making it more stable and reliable and faster. And a lighter footprint, more slim. The same way with Final Cut Studio. They didn't really add many new features. They just worked on under the hood and making it more stable, making it work better. Adding these little workflow features that you really don't pick up or can't list. But they're little workflow features that you realize are there after you've used it for a while. Like... In Final Cut Studio, you'll come across a little feature that lets you copy and paste this or that. You'll be like, hey, I couldn't do that in my last, in the last version. It's just little things like that and improve workflow. And I think that's the, the whole idea of Apple's round of updates this time around. Just We've got what we want. It looks good. Let's just make it better. And considering Vista, to me, was a public beta people had to pay for, considering how much Ultimate's going to be and... You want, legally, if you want to equip five computers 
with, with Windows Ultimate? How much is that going to cost you? Some people say you can go from XP to Vista. I heard you can't. I heard you're going to have to pay full price. I heard you can't upgrade from XP to Vista. I heard you have to buy a whole system and wipe your drive, whatever. I don't know how that works. I don't know. This is a video about the iTunes event, not Windows. I'm getting sidetracked. Basically, what I wanted to say was I was impressed. I liked what they had the offer. I like what they had to offer. I think it's going to make our experience with music and video that much better digitally. And I'm really looking forward to what they bring at the beginning of the new year. So um, enjoy iTunes 9. Check out the LPs and movies. Get your little Nano for 150 bucks. How can you go wrong? And um, we'll talk about the next event when it happens. Thanks for watching, guys. OS 10.